Hello kindergarteners, how are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. I have more stories for us today, so welcome back to our read outs. Um, so today we have these three stories. We have The Very Hungry Caterpillar. This one is a good book. I really like this story. I have a lot of fun with it. We have Gila Monster's Burrow, which is one I've never read before. And this is a nonfiction book that's going to teach us about what a Gila Monster is. And lastly, we will finish with Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Hmm. So let's get started. All right. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. This is a really old book, too. I've had this book for a long time. All right. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. Wow, cool, he turned into a butterfly. He started out as a tiny little caterpillar, and then he changed. Um, so when he changed, when he goes into his cocoon, that's something special that caterpillars do. It's called metamorphosis. So then he was a caterpillar. He was a tiny caterpillar, turned into a fat caterpillar. Then he went into his cocoon, and this is when metamorphosis happens. His body changes from a caterpillar to a butterfly. That was pretty neat. Cool. All right, now we will learn about Gila monsters. What do you think a Gila monster is? What do you think a burrow is? Gila Monster's Burrow. This one is by D. Phillips. Here's our table of contents. Table of contents tells us everything that's going to be in the story. So this is going to be a long book. I don't know if we're going to be able to finish it, but I'll go through it and I probably won't read all the words, but we'll get to look at the pictures because there's going to be a lot of information in this book. So maybe we'll stop, we'll read a little bit, and then we'll come back tomorrow and we can read a little bit more. All right, let's meet a Gila monster. It's a summer evening in a desert. From a hole beneath some rocks, a large pink and black animal appears. It's a Gila monster. The animal has been in its burrow all day to protect itself from the hot sun. As night falls, it heads off into the cool darkness to hunt for food. So there's the Gila monster, and there's a burrow. The word Gila, oh, I'm pronouncing it wrong. The word Gila is pronounced Gila, so it's actually a Gila monster. A Gila monster is a type of lizard, 
Long ago, people named these lizards monsters because they wrongly believed the lizards attacked and killed humans. How would you describe a Gila monster to someone who had just never seen one? That's a good question. How would you describe it? Hmm. Cool. A Gila monster. All about Gila monsters. A Gila monster has a large head, short legs, and a fat tail. Its body is covered with scales. On one on parts of the lizard's body, the scales look like small beads. They kind of do. It's cool. Many of a Gila monster's scales are black. The others are pink, orange, or yellow. Gila monsters live in deserts where few plants grow. So here's a close-up of the Gila monster's scales. And then here's a map of where they live. So this is North America. We live on North America. Um, if you look right here, I think that's where California is, right on the edge there. And then this yellow part, that's where the Gila monsters live. Gila monsters belong to a group of animals called reptiles. All reptiles are cold-blooded. This means their body temperature rise, body temperatures rise and drop with the temperature of the air around them. Hmm. So when the air is hot, the Gila, mo the Gila monster's uh, body is hot. But when it's cold, the Gila monster's body is cold too. And I think that's why you see lizards and other um, like snakes and stuff laying out on rocks in the sun to try to get warm because they're cold. An adult Gila monster is about 21.5 inches long from its nose to the end of its tail. Find this number on a measuring tape to see how long the lizard is in real life. That's a good idea. If you have a ruler or a measuring tape, you can find 21.5 inches and you can see how long it is. Wow. 21.5 inches. Huh. All the way from its nose to its tail. A Gila monster's homes. A Gila monster usually uses two burrows. It digs one burrow in a cool place to use as a shelter during spring and summer. It digs a second burrow in a warmer area to use during fall and winter. To make a burrow, a Gila monster finds a place with lots of rocks. Then it uses its strong claws to dig a hole under the rocks. So there's its claws. Oh wow, look how sharp they are. Sometimes a Gila monster uses a burrow dug by another animal. For example, the lizard might find a desert tortoise's burrow. If the tortoise no longer lives in a burrow, the Gila monster moves in. So there's the burrow, and there's where he would come in, or she would come in, and then go down into the burrow. Hey, we learned what a burrow is. So it's a little bit of shelter to either keep it cool or warm. So during summer and spring, it wants to stay cool, because remember, it's really hot out. And then when it's cold in winter and fall, it wants it to stay warm. So that's really interesting. Cool. So we're going to stop there. We're on page 9. Tomorrow, we'll come back to page 10 and 11, and we'll find out what is going on. We'll see if we, what else we can learn. Cool. All right, so we'll come back to that tomorrow. Um, now we're going to read Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Lily loved school. Here she's saying, I love school. She loved the pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety-clickety-click down the long, shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. She loved the fish sticks and chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shoes, he wore glasses on a chain around his neck, and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, Howdy. He thought that desks and rows were old-fashioned and boring. Do you rodents think you can handle a semicircle? 
and he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slater. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother, Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily, asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawings and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger, and she wrote stories about him, too. During sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in the class, even if she didn't know the answer. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. One morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend. Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses, complete with glittery diamonds on a chain like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters, and best of all, she had a brand new plastic purple purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time being considerate. Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. The glasses were so glittery. The quarters were so shiny. And the music was so nice. Not to mention how excellent her purse was for storing school supplies. Look. Lily whispered fiercely, Look, everyone, look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. He was not amused. Uh-oh. I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there, and then you can take them home. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone, her quarters were gone, her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab. She was still very sad. She thought, and she thought, and she thought, and then she became angry. She thought, and she thought, and she thought some more, and then she became furious. She thought, and she thought, and she thought a bit longer, and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Right before the last bell rang, Lily sneaked to the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. Uh-oh, there's the picture. It shows a picture of big, fat, mean Mr. Stealing's teacher. Claws, thief, bad, wanted by the FBI. P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. Oh, no. When all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Stillinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly, and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said, and she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside, and so was a note for Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. I'll stay here a million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything always happen to me? 1,051, 1,052, 1,099? That night, Lily drew a picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him, too. 
Aww. There's her picture. Her story says, Lily was really sorry, so everyone forgave her. Even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her especially incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face on, down on everyone and everything and the bugs and worms. The end. Lily's mother wrote a note, and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Mr. Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story, and he looked at the picture, and he read the note, and he sampled the snacks. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you think we should do with this? asked Mr. Slinger. Could we just throw it away? asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sharing time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery, glittery movie star sunglasses. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just about all they could say. Wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She picked at them often, but did not disturb a soul. Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily's snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher, everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily hurt, held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy, and she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. This is why, when she didn't want to be a, that is, when she didn't want to be a dancer, or a surgeon, or an ambulance driver, or a diva, or a pilot, or a fair dresser, or a scuba diver. The end. That was a good book. That was kind of silly. So Lily wanted to be a teacher, and then something happened with the teacher, and she changed her mind. She got mad. But then they solved their problem. She had a bad day, but then she had a good day. We learned a little bit about that. Not every day can be amazing, but... Some days are harder than others, and that's okay. Maybe you want to be a teacher when you grow up. Or maybe you want to be all the things Lily wants to be. She doesn't just want to be a teacher. She wants to be a dancer, a surgeon, an ambulance driver. Oh my goodness. So many different options. A scuba driver. But whatever you want to be when you grow up, I hope it's something that you love. Like, I love being a teacher, but I didn't always want to be a teacher. But I love doing it. I love teaching. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. Um, take care of each other. I will see you tomorrow for more stories. Bye, kindergarten. Love you. Miss you. Take care of each other.